GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Hello and welcome to Galata Plus. In this video review episode, we are going to be talking about Tarani Rasendran's Yatisai and it's a richly imagined slice of historical fiction about brutal wars and the male psyche. As always, this review is going to have spoilers, so be prepared. The broad storyline of Yatisai, which is set in the 7th century, is as narrow as possible. I mean, as tightly focused as possible. The Cheras, Cholas and Pandyas are fighting. The wars go on and on until the Pandyas drive the Cholas into hiding. This is a plot point that gave birth to Selvaragavan's Ayurathilorvan. The Cheras, meanwhile, are sold off as slaves and they remain mostly off-screen. The few shots of them hint at a sequel. So, with the Pandyas on top, you expect the Cholas to regroup and fight back. But what happens is something very interesting. The first half of the film sets us amidst a completely different people, a sub-clan, a tribe named the Ainar. They live an aboriginal, nomadic, almost hunter-gatherer kind of life in the dry lands. And at least one man, Koti, played by Seon, dreams of bigger, better things. His birth is described by a narrator as something momentous, as though nature herself has willed this human being into existence. And again, our expectations are subverted. We think Koti is the equivalent of the one, someone who will lead his clan slash tribe to greatness. After all, he does tell his wife that the child that she's expecting, he's already decided that it's going to be a son, that the child will not lead the nomadic existence that he and his fellow people are leading. But after he moves up in life, after he moves into a palace, he is seduced by silks and jewels and women who are forced to yield to his demands. One of the film's most spectacular scenes has Kodi relaxing in the still waters of the palace pond. We get no voiceovers, we get no lines, but we are able to imagine what it must be like for him to be leading that kind of stress-free life he wanted for his son. The contrast between the stillness of this stretch and the hyper-action of his journey up to this point that's brought out beautifully. Beautiful is a word that can be used for almost all of Yatisai, which runs just about two hours. In the opening credits, there is a person listed for storyboard, and this is a carefully designed film. The director and the cinematographer Akilesh Katamutu display a dramatic eye for framing with eye-catching colors. One of the loveliest images I have seen all this year is that of men climbing the walls of a palace. Instead of pulling back and giving us a wide view, the camera takes us just close enough that we see the action of scaling the wall and the resemblance of these men to say a swarm of creatures with a singular purpose. Composer Chakravarti opts for both modern sounding strings as well as tribal instruments like I think the didgeridoo and the soundtrack rises and falls with the events on screen. The comparisons to Pony and Selvan are inevitable and all we need to say is that Yatisai goes in the completely opposite direction. If Pony and Selvan is a stately, glorious Tolstoy epic, Yatisai is a furious, gory, grimy graphic novel. The characters are minimal and functional and the film focuses on two things. The first is the bunch of brutal action scenes choreographed by Om Siva Prakash. The first big action scene is a ferocious bout of wrestling. Then we get a set piece with a shield formation. Then we get a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. These scenes involve men trying to exert their authority on other men. You will hear Hear that word a lot, authority or adhigaram, or you will read it a lot because the narrative keeps slipping into the local dialect of the time. It's Tamil, but not the Tamil we know, and so we have subtitles in both English and in modern day Tamil. The title, for instance, translates to southern direction. Some of the techniques in these action scenes are a little too showy like the constant switch to slow-mo or the constant fades to black but there is no escaping the sheer savagery of and inside these men. The blood spattered actors right down to the extras look like they are out to kill each other for real. There is an almost John Wick like simplicity in how the story is essentially a clothesline for a set of action set pieces but Yatisai is much more and that 
brings us to the second focus of the film. Through these battles and through the dialogues, we get to focus on the male psyche, which stays the same, whether the male, the man is Chera or Chola or Pandya or Ainar. Again, we return to that word, authority. These men just want that one thing, authority over everyone else. In one especially lovely set of back-to-back -back scenes, we watch a wedding night sequence and then an interaction between another man and woman. In both these scenes, the men make it clear that the central emotion or driving force, it's not love, it's control, it's authority. It's the fact that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. The second half brings in the Pandya king Ranadhira played by Shakti Mitran into greater focus and like I said before his kingly status does not make him any less of a savage than those of the Ainar tribe. His showdown with Kodi is brilliantly staged with utter minimalism. That's the success of Yati Se. Instead of the spectacle of cinema, we get the ethnographic feel of a National Geographic documentary. The director spends a lot of time on facets like a sacrificial ritual, a pre-war dance performance or a marriage ceremony where the wedding vows are written on a leaf and woven into the tali. I don't know how much of this comes from research and how much of it has been imagined, but all of it acts like a time machine transporting us to this strange world. These long stretches between the action scenes establish wonderfully odd rhythms in the storytelling that enhance that National Geographic feeling. Even the weapons feel authentic. In a close-up, we see an arrowhead that looks like something carved by Paleolithic man. At first, it appears that the secondary characters are not as fleshed out as they should be. There is a Brahmin priest whose lust is no less than that of the other characters he is supposedly above, given that he says, he is both king and god. He is yet another male embodiment of authority. More crucially, there are the temple dancers, the Tevaradiyars, who become playthings at the hands of men. We get hints of their points of view, but not in a way that really fleshes them out. Supatra Robert, in a brief role, appears as a woman who appears to wield some power, and I would have liked to know how this came to be, given the generally male-centric nature of this universe, but these are very small complaints in a movie that shows how men will be men and will do anything to retain their, yes, authority. And that's it about Tarani Rasendran's Yati Sai. If you like this video review, do subscribe to Galata Plus and see you soon at the movies. GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand.